Hello everyone! In this playthrough, we're going to beat Elden Ring using poison and rot damage over time. We will also do this run without leveling up, relying solely on stat boosting items such as great runes, talismans, crystal tears, and equipment with special effects. For this run, we will follow the game's progression route which means we will be navigating throughout Elden Ring's world in the sequence intended by the game's design. We kick off our adventure in Limgrave as usual. Before delving into our primary build, let's ensure we secure the essentials. Stormhill for the Strength Not Crystal tier, Summon Water Village for the Turtle Talisman, and finally the Mistwoods for the Axe Talisman, the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 4 to craft fetid pots, as well as the Spike Crack tier and Green Spilled Crystal tier. Next we will make hold at the High Road Cave for the Shamshir as well as the Blue Dancer Charm once we have defeated the Golem. After that we will make our way to the Nomadic Merchant in North Limgrave where we will be purchasing the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 3, which lets me craft pickled turtlenecks as well as poison bone arrows. After that, it is time to pick up all of the cracked pots we can find in Limgrave. For that, our first stop is Merchant Kali, who sells three cracked pots. Next, we will head inside the Grove Side Cave for one more cracked pot. I'll return to the merchant in North Limgrave as he sells another cracked pot. After that, I'll make my way to the Weeping Peninsula, where I will first off purchase another cracked pot from the merchant at the Castle Morn Rampart Site of Grace. To the east of the merchant, there is a spirit spring, which provides access to the rooftop of a tower. Upon reaching the top of this tower, we discover the Great Turtle Shell, which increases stamina recovery. Next, we will grab our first poison incantation that is dropped by a teleporting teardrop scarab. Now it's time to make our way inside the Tomb's Ward Cave for the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 8, which lets us craft poison grease. Here we might as well deal with the area boss to get our hands on the Viridian Amber Medallion. As this boss is immune to poison, it doesn't really matter what kind of weapon I use. Now let us travel east of the Church of Pilgrimage and down the cliff. In a bowl surrounded by poison flowers, we find the Faith Knot Crystal Tear. Our next checkpoint brings us to the Weeping Everjail for the Radagon Scar Seal, which we must first earn by defeating the ancient hero of Zamor. It worked! That's great, I'm glad. Before departing the Weeping Peninsula, let's journey to Castle Morn to collect all the smithing stones and defeat the region boss.
Right. That was quick. Quick and easy. Now I will journey to the smoldering church situated at the border of Limgrave and leading to Kaelid. Typically, I wouldn't venture here so early in the game as it disrupts the progression route, considering this area is part of Kaelid. However, traversing Limgrave and Leurnia solely with the poison build we've developed thus far would be underwhelming. So I'm making an exception. At the smoldering church, we discover the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 14, which grants us the ability to craft poison pots and poison bone darts. Having journeyed to the smoldering church, which the game marks as entering Kaelid, upon reaching the Castle War Tunnel, we can unlock access to the Round Table Hole. Here, I can upgrade my weapon to plus 5 using the smithing stones I have collected. After that, I am ready to face the challenges in the boss arena. For this fight, I am using my Shamshir plus 5 as well as poison pots. Oh my god, I was absolutely stuck here. I don't like this weapon that I'm using. I think this took a while, but it's fine. I didn't really know what to do here, if I'm being honest, because the poison is so slow and my weapon, the Shamshir, the spinning thing, it just takes too long. So if I were to use it on market in second phase, he would have hit me. So I did not want to risk that and therefore the entire fight took a bit longer than it should have, but I think it's okay. All right, with that, we're going ahead to Stormwheel Castle. You there. 
Come over here, won't you? T -t Try the opening right here. The guards don't know about it. There's a gigantic hole in the wall and no guard knows about it. That's kind of weird. Having arrived at Castle Stormville, our next step is to gather all the smithing stones available and procure the cracked pots before confronting Godric to obtain his great rune. For the fight with Godric, I will be using my Shamshir plus 7 and the Finger Seal plus 3. This is the last time that I will make use of the Shamshir as I am not happy with its moveset. The R2 takes too long to cast and I just cannot have that. Okay, I need to be fast and quick on my feet otherwise bosses hit me and I don't want to get hit. However, with this build I try to be more dexterity and thus I have chosen the Shamshir and this is one of the few dexterity weapons that I have not used in my playthroughs yet. Poison, so oh god. With Godric's great rune secured, it's time to head to Stormhill to reach the Divine Tower of Limgrave. Upon arrival, I can activate the great rune and unleash its power. Let's head back to Stormhill and locate Knight Bernal at the War Master's Shack. Once there, we can obtain the Ash of War Parry, the Ash of War Impaling Thrust, and the Ash of War Stamp Upward Cut. These acquisitions may prove useful in the upcoming stages. Finally, we have arrived at Lyrnia of Lakes. Our first stop is the Lesgear Ruins to collect one Ritual Pot. Then we will pause at the Purified Ruins, where, in an underground chamber, we will discover the Two Finger Heirloom granting plus 5 faith. Afterward, we will locate Jarburg to gather all the pots available. In total, we can collect 3 cracked pots and 2 ritual pots from this location. We can also farm Poison Bloom here as well. 
This is pretty great for me because I need poison bloom to craft poison pots, poison grease and all the consumable that I can craft that have poison. Here we do find the dexterity not crystal tier. I don't want to deal with these guys. Okay, from the scenic isle side of grace, let's head east to that pavilion over there. I'll be pursuing Raya's questline, so when we reach Altus Plateau, she'll guide us to Volcano Manor, which is necessary for acquiring the Serpent Bone Blade. Alright, next ahead I will actually go to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel here, so that I can get my hands on the Miner's Bell Bearing 1 to upgrade extra weapons. Oh, it's just this one dude. Okay, okay. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, so you can poison them. Interesting. My next destination is the rune strewn precipice, where I'll focus on gathering smithing stones in the tunnel leading to the precipice. However, my primary objective in this area is to acquire the Serpent God's Curved Sword from the rune strewn precipice overlook. This unique weapon has the ability to restore HP upon slaying an enemy. I believe a weapon crafted in the likeness of an ancient serpent deity is particularly fitting for a poison rot build. Before departing from the precipice and advancing towards Raya Lucaria Academy, let's first defeat the area boss here. Well, oh, I did not lose all my runes, so. Oh. Now that my weapon is upgraded to plus 13, it's time to enter Stillwater Cave in pursuit of the Winged Sword Insignia. However, before obtaining the talisman, I must overcome the challenge of defeating the Clean Rot Knight, which serves as an extremely difficult boss at this stage of the game. I have no idea how I survived this. I have no idea. 
Next up is entering the second legacy dungeon, Raya Lucaria Academy. Within, we can collect more smithing stones and an additional ritual pot before confronting the gatekeeper boss, Red Wolf of Redagon. God damn it. This did not go as planned. I intended to actually poison the doggo using the poison mist, but it just didn't jump into the mist. Well, uh, whatever. After the battle, it's time to collect one more cracked pot and gather additional smithing stones to further upgrade our weapon before facing Renala in the Grand Library. After the fight with Renala, we will proceed directly to Carrier Manor. Here, while we can gather smithing stones once again, there's nothing else of interest. Therefore, let's head for the boss without delay. 
I won't be using Poison Grease in this fight, as Royal Knight Loretta is immune to poison and therefore I won't be wasting my precious crafting material for this fight. Yeah, I'm out of stamina, I need to wait for a moment. Following the encounter with Loretta, it's time to traverse through the three sisters in search of Rani and her companions. Her questline eventually leads to the triggering of the Radan festival. To greet thee below. Take from him the particulars. The eternal city of Nokro lies somewhere at the bottom of this land. I'm planning to go below through the well in the mistwood. See if I can't find the road to Nokro from there. Don't keep me waiting, eh? Here we are in Siofa River, where Blythe informs us that he's reached an impasse. To continue the quest line, we must speak with Salavis. With his recommendation, he directs us to locate a sorceress named Salen in the Waypoint Ruins. Salen holds the key to unlocking the Radan Festival. However, before reaching her, we must overcome the obstacle of the Mad Pumpkin Head blocking our path. Upon defeating the pumpkin head, we can gather vital information from Salen and return to Blythe, who awaits us next in Redmain Castle, situated in Kaelid. Now it's time for us to hit the road to Kaelid. Having arrived in Kaelid, let's locate the nomadic merchant near Ionia Swamp Shore. This merchant offers items that are of particular interest for this build. I guess I will buy some of these. I can buy a bunch, so I think I will just buy... I'll buy 30 for now, and with the rest of my money I'll buy that. Let's continue. I have never used... I have not used the poison clump before, so that will be a new for me. That will be something new for me. And now let's make our way to the Nomadic Merchant in South Caled to purchase the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 15, which contains the knowledge needed to craft Rodbone arrows. Then Beast Bones, Aeonium Butterfly. <laughs> okay, um, I guess I should not waste those. Now a more challenging task lies ahead. I must cheese the Knight's Cavalry as he drops the Ash of War Poison Moth Flight upon defeat. This guy seems to be a bit stupid. I don't know, it's, it's not working the way I want it to. He's not really following me. Do you really not see me? I'm over here. Do you really not see me? I'm here. Do you not see me? Oh my god, he really does not see me. Why are you designed this way? Okay, I'll, I had to craft these, the fletched one. The other ones did not work. So all is good. Now I can just wait until he gets poisoned and then just rinse and repeat this entire thing. Okay, now we got the Ash of War Poison Moth Flight. Finally, I can go to my grace and equip it. I have waited long enough for an Ash of War. Continuing our journey, we seek out Gori, located in a shack near Celia. Gori asks us to help a young girl named Millicent. To do so, he requires us to defeat Commander Neil, who is found somewhere in the swamp of Aeonia. 
I'll utilize the environment to my advantage to defeat Commander Neil, though this approach demands patience due to its time-consuming nature. Once we have the quest item in our possession, we will return to Gori. He will then guide us to our next task, which is to locate Millicent found at the Church of the Plague. To reach her, we must first unlock the Celia Gateway by lighting the correct one of three towers scattered throughout Celia. Upon handling over the quest item, Millicent will reward us with the Prothesis Talisman, boosting dexterity by 5. This is a valuable item for our build. I will follow Millicent's questline all the way to Altus Plateau as she holds another talisman that may prove useful later on in the game. Before we continue, let us return back to the Swamp of Aeonia to pick up the Poison Mist Ash of War which we find here. Okay, here we got it and with that we can pick up another Ash of War here in the Swamp. Okay, so it goes through there and then it goes where? Yeah, I'll just wait here. Oh, I don't know what happened, but I got it. I guess maybe... I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened, but I got it. So now I have the poison armament. I have no idea what happened. I wonder if it got like rot from these things. I have no idea. I don't know. But hey, I got lucky. I'm not going to complain. So here we are now in the Gale Tunnel. I came here to pick up the Cross Nagi Nata. As I would like to fight Radan with that one instead of my Serpent Curved Sword. And at the end of the tunnel I have to deal with this stupid magma worm. So I'll meet you guys there. As usual, let's deal with the area boss for the sake of completion. Okay, we're done. Before continuing our journey toward the castle, we must make a stop at Fort Gale. Inside a chest here, we discover the Star Scorch Talisman, an artifact that bestows its wearer with plus 5 strength. Okay, I should return back to the round table hall to pick up my third pouch, since once again I forgot to do that. Now the festival awaits holding the promise of an exhilarating fight. Cat here in my mouth.
I did not manage to poison him. I don't know. I did not manage to poison him. If I have had the chance to throw two poison pots, I could have poisoned him, but it's fine. It worked out in the end. Tanokra. Barani's fate will be decided. Let's meet where the falling star bit the earth. I am now heading into Nokron to acquire the black wet blade, which allows me to add poison affinity to my weapon. Additionally, I'll obtain the Finger Slayer Blade for Rani. Handing in the Finger Slayer Blade will grant me easier access to the Lake of Rot, where I will find important gear for my build. While I'm here, I might as well deal with the area boss for the sake of completion. I was lucky enough to collect one dismounter from a Caden South Thord, so I'm going to use that plus 13 in this fight. That didn't poison him? Oh my god, is this even real? This was more difficult than it should have been. We will hold off on returning to Rani for now. Instead, let's take a detour to Dragon Barrow, where we can claim the Radagon Sword Seal and gather high tier smithing stones to enhance our arsenal. Although we could confront the area boss in the Divine Tower, there's nothing of importance found there, so I'll be skipping it. With Dragon Barrow's treasures secured, it's time to focus on Rani. Handing in the Finger Slayer Blade to Rani will grant us access to Rena's Rise. From there, we can take the Waygate to Ansel River Main and proceed to Noxtella. From there, we can make our way further to the Lake of Rot. In the southeastern corner of the lake, atop a column, we can obtain the Mushroom Crown. This crown enhances attack power by 10% for 20 seconds whenever something nearby is afflicted with poison or rot. Located in a rune in the western part of the lake, we can acquire the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 22, granting the expertise needed to craft rot pot and rot grease. Upon traversing the Lake of Rot and reaching the Grand Cloister, we find the Scorpion Stinger in a building situated to the west, heavily guarded by giant bugs. 
This is our very first rot weapon. So that's pretty nice, I guess. Equipped with my new scorpion stinger and the mushroom crown, it's time to make my way toward the area boss that is Estelle, natural born of the void. not working. I didn't even manage to poison him yet. Oh no. I don't know why I was doing that. Man, I'm very, very happy about this. But, uh, <laughs> that was a very slow run, but hey, hey, what you gonna do? Hmm? What you gonna do? All right, with Lake of Rut completed, it is time that we go to Altos Plateau. And for that, let's take the way gate at the Raya Lucaria Academy which will then bring us to Balaam Highway. And from here on, we can take the Grand Lift of Dactus. Having arrived on Altos Plateau, before tackling the main objectives, let's prioritize gathering the essential items. Our initial destination is the Lux Ruins, where defeating the Demi-Human Queen allows us to obtain the Ritual Sword Talisman, a potentially valuable asset for future challenges. No. 
noch, goddammit. Come on, just die already. Jesus Christ. Okay, Ritual Sword Tath. I'm not sure if I will actually use this in this playthrough. Because I'm really depending on stamina a lot in this run. So we will see. But hey, it's nice to have. To continue Melissa's quest, I'm journeying to the Windmill Village in pursuit of the Godskin Apostle. Later in the game, we will encounter Millicent here, so defeating the boss is imperative. Next, let's head inside Altus Tunnel for the Arsenal Charm Plus 1 and the Sombrestone Miner's Bell Bearing 2, which is dropped by the Chrysalid bosses at the end of the tunnel. Next, we will collect the Endspore up here, which is dropped by a hostile NPC found in the fields west of the Shaded Castle. You also do poison stuff. Then I guess you're not getting poisoned. Oh, you do. Okay. Dude, I don't know. My game keeps lagging today. I don't know what's going on here. Is she not moving? Is she staying there? Oh great, I can just kite her from afar. Okay, I have no idea about this equipment. All I know is I have the end spore up here. I have never used this before, so this is the first time that I will be using this weapon. In the Shaded Castle, let's prioritize obtaining the items we came for before confronting the area boss. Firstly, we will procure the Perfumous Cookbook, which enables the crafting of Poison Spray Mist and Blob Boil Aromatic. Afterward, I will acquire the Valkyrie Arm from Millicent and then retrieve the Perfumer Bottle. With all the necessary items secured, it's time to confront the area boss to ensure completion of this area. No.
After the fight, we can procure another perfumer bottle from a camp near the Altus Junction. After the Shaded Castle, there's nothing else left to do here in Altus Plateau. And therefore, next we will make our way to Mount Galmir before we uh, go to Landel. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. I, I don't need this in my life. Okay, go away. Oh yeah, this is the Seath Water Cave. Here I can pick up the Kindred of Rot Talisman. To acquire the talisman, we have to defeat the area boss inside the cave and the talisman is dropped after the fight. Fine, I can apply it, but I don't think I need it really. Take the upper road to Mount Galmir and cross the bridge as our next stop is Volcano Cave to grab the coil shield and while we're here we might as well deal with the area boss for the sake of completion. With all of that done, it is time to return back to the Grand Lift of Dectus and meet Rhea here so that she can take us to Volcano Manor. Upon reaching Volcano Manor, we have to join the party and engage in the first two quests, as participating in the second Volcano Manor quest will grant us the Serpent Bone Blade. With that in mind, let's grab the first letter, make our way to Storm Hill and start the quest. In this fight, I will make use of my coil shield as I cannot use any great runes here and therefore I'll be relying on damage over time in this instance. With the first invasion completed, we can return to Lady Tanith for our reward and receive the second letter for our final volcano quest in this playthrough, which takes place in Altus Plateau. I can't go anywhere from these fucking hills, for fuck's sake! This was the worst. <laughs> this was the worst. 
Following this disappointing performance, we can return back to Lady Tanith once more for our reward, which is the Serpent Bone Blade. Although we are done with the quest, our exploration of Volcano Manor is not yet complete. There remain two items within this dungeon that I am eager to acquire, and it seems fitting to challenge the area boss Rikard in the process. I left the serpent slaying spear in the Lord's chamber. While I intend to wield the serpent hunter against Rikard, the serpent can be poisoned, so I'm keen on trying it out. Before we confront Rikard, let's pick up the perfumer bottle from the drawing room and then venture deeper into the manor to face the Godskin Noble boss to claim the Godskin Stitcher. Following this battle, let's press on with our exploration deeper into the manor. We will stumble upon a room sealed by an imp statue. Unlocking this room will lead us even further inside the manor, eventually reaching the final instance where we can salvage the dagger talisman. Once these tasks are accomplished, we will be ready to confront Reichardt in the boss arena. I was sick at the time of this recording, so I didn't feel like having a face cam. I hope that's okay for you guys. We will first go ahead and use the R1 on the Serpent Hunter. We will really just go crazy with this. When the serpent is down, I have to quickly use a starlight chart and eat one pickled turtleneck at the next instant is heavy on my FP and my stamina. As soon as the second phase starts, I will have to use my two rock pods to cause a rot onto Rikard. And keep an eye out for his neck, I guess, because as soon as he starts leaning forward, he will cast floating flame skulls, and I definitely, definitely need to prevent him from casting those. I will do that by using my Ash of War. There you go. That is very important, otherwise, I will not be able to stun lock him in a short bit. Any moment from now he should lift up his right leg 
There you go, and now it's time to cast the Ash of War Great Serpent Hunt and this will stun lock him. So I will simply go, I will simply continue casting the Ash of War endlessly. The only thing I now have to watch out for are those lava springs. So whenever you see the floor getting reddish, roll away, I have to roll away. That is the only, only fatal thing left in this fight now. And this way we can endlessly hit Reichard and eventually defeat him. Alright, with all the elements now collected, I will make my way finally to the outskirts and with that to Landel. Upon reaching the outskirts, let's make our way to the sealed tunnel where the smithing stone miner's bell bearing 2 lies hidden inside a chest. It is worth noting that defeating the area boss is not obligatory for us, however, since we're already here, it wouldn't hurt to take on the challenge. Come on, I need some stamina. No more stamina left. Can't believe how I can't believe how much I was struggling with stamina given that I honestly like put so much shit into it. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. I can't believe this. Now it's time to confront Margaret 2.0 in the outskirts for a secret bus fight. This encounter is entirely optional and we could simply flee from it. However, defeating Margaret will yield the Viridian Amber Medallion plus one, which increases stamina. Since I've been struggling with endurance, it's an essential addition for my build. Oh, okay. Can't go further than that. Well, I don't want to go to the other side because I always fall into that stupid hole. At last, the Draconic Tree Sentinel awaits as the final boss before we can enter Landel.
Ach komm schon, just once. was quite challenging I must say <laughs> with this build everything seems a lot more difficult I I don't know I don't know I am not sure what I did wrong I feel like my on my weapons they just feel like they're not strong enough having arrived in Lindel, let's obtain another perfuma bottle from the tall building near the east capital rampart we can do this by climbing up the ladder and locating the bottle in a chest hidden behind a table My game is my game is lagging. I don't know what's going on. My game is stuttering really hard. I'm not sure if it's in the recording. If you can see the stuttering in the recording, it's really bad. It's really really bad. I definitely need to fix this by the time I get to the mountaintops because otherwise I will mess up my timing. It's really stuttering. I'm having legs. What are you doing?
is not what I wanted. continues beyond the point where he goes like ah I'm really curious to see if this would work Yeah, this the spear is really annoying. Morgoth defeated, the rolled route awaits. To access it, we need to pass through the big doors northeast of the main road. Along this path, on a lower route, we'll discover another perfumer bottle. Now let's leap forward to the mountaintops as there is nothing for us at the Forbidden Lands, aside from some smithing stones. In the mountaintops, our first task will be to acquire the minor spell bearing from the Zamor ruins before proceeding to Castle Salt. I needed to come here for a smithing stone 7 and I also require the second half of the Helic Cream Medallion as I need to go to the consecrated snow fields later on. For that reason I will resort to some cheat gameplay and simply poison Commander Neil from afar using an error in the game design. Please. Oh, there you are. With Commander Neil defeated and the Halictry Medallion in our possession, let's continue toward the Forge. On our way, let's make a stop at the First Church of America to acquire yet another bell bearing. 
Before heading to the forge, I need to return to the Altus Plateau. In the previous instance, I gave Millicent the Valkyrie arm, and due to that, we find her next in the Windmill Village. I am very sorry, Millicent, I love you, but I'm not going to the Halic Tree, so... So sorry. I don't like this either. But this talisman saves me so much energy, you know, because otherwise I have to equip this and this. And now I just need to equip this and I'm good. So I'm very sorry, Millicent. I'm very, very sorry, Millicent. I'm, I really am. I'm very sorry. With Millicent's talisman now in our possession, it's time to head toward the forge. The only obstacle standing between us and the forge is the fire giant, whom we must defeat in order to burn the earth tree. Yeah. Where did you go? I have no idea. My weapons don't do enough damage, it's going to be a lot of hack and slash, flee and then repeat from here on out.
No. Fuck's sake, finally. Oh, this dude is so exhausting. The fact that we start at the fight here and he moves like all across the freaking map is so exhausting. Yeah, yeah, come here. Come. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. I'm done. I'm done with the fight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done with the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done with the fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm done with the fight. Yo. Let's see if I can climb up here while petting you. I don't think so. I might just fall. Oh, it's working. It's very slow, but it's working. Before making our way to farm Azula, we need to take a slight detour to the consecrated snowfields to obtain the rotten battle hammer and the rotten great axe. The rotten battle hammer can be found north of the consecrated snowfield site of Grace. There we will encounter a rotten duelist near some stone coffins. After defeating the duelist, we will acquire the battle hammer. As for the rotten great axe, it awaits us to the north of Ordinia liturgical town and will be dropped by another rotten duelist. Upon reaching Farm Azula, we can obtain the Somberstone Minus Balbarn 4 from a cliff at the edge of the Tempest Facing Balcony. After gathering all the smithing stones in the vicinity, it's time to confront the Godskin duo. Yeah, let's go with that. I don't know. I will wield my Rotten Great Axe and despite sleep being classified as dark magic by me, I will utilize sleep pots. Firstly, I will poison and rot the Coblin Noble before lulling him to sleep. Once he's asleep, I will hit the Lanky Apostle with a sleep pot. Can you do? I don't have time! With both foes asleep, I'll consume some exalted flesh for extra strength and a pickled turtleneck for stamina and strike the apostle with my axe. Then repeat the process with the noble. Three light R2s for a stance break. For the second summoning, I will try to poison the next gut skin to trigger my mushroom crown for extra attack power. Other than that, I will stick to the same tactic as previously. Yeah, life is easy with sleep pots. Man, this was... This was on time. This was on time. My... I think my... Um, my winter's physique is about to run out any moment. So... Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go, my winter's physique just ran out. This was like really on time. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm okay with this fight. After the fight, we have to locate the Dragon Temple lift hidden behind an imp statue. Taking the lift down leads us to a lower hidden path where we will encounter Alexander, 
He challenges us to a warrior's duel. Ooh! Wow! That was incredible! I have never seen this before! Oh, that was far too easy. After defeating him, he rewards us with his shard, significantly enhancing skill attack power by 15%. Before entering the lift that takes us to the Great Bridge, we can pick up the Somberstone Miner's Bell Bearing 5. Upon arriving at the Great Bridge, we will confront Malekith. In this battle, I will utilize my battle hammer and drop pods. The ultimate ability on my battle hammer enhances physical attack by 10% and provides a stamina recovery speed of 20% compared to the normal stamina recovery rate. This lasts for 60 seconds. I can't believe he has no rut yet. Oh my god. I... <sighs> that was an absolute waste. So stupid. Fine, it's fine. I will get my chance. to wait now I only have two I cannot waste them Hark, I only have one left Oh god, fucking hell. Oh my god, that is the worst. That is the fucking worst. Oh no. That is the fucking worst. No more, no more risk taking. No more risk taking. Ay, 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 ay. 
I don't, don't. Come on, you're almost gone. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That was so nerve wracking. <laughs> I can't believe this. The plan was to get road pots on him, red pots. So the fight would be much easier for me, but this is how it ended up being. <sighs> I have no idea how I'm going to deal with Gideon Ofni. I don't have a single cheat weapon. I don't have a single cheat weapon. I thought this would be the easiest run ever, but this actually turned out to be one of the more difficult runs that I have or that I'm doing. It's crazy. For the fight with Sir Gideon Ofnir, I'm wielding my Anspor Rapier plus 10 and gearing up with items to boost my stamina. I'm also consuming Turtleneck and sniffing Aromatic for added strength and stamina. Additionally, I'm intentionally poisoning myself to amp up my strength. Since I don't have any cheese weapons, I'm reverting back to my reliable impaling thrust Ash of War. I have chosen the Anspor Rapier instead of the Naginata, as the Anspor Rapier is a lot more accurate with the impaling thrust as is the Naginata. to get the timing of inhaling the blood ball aromatic right to the second otherwise I will be hit by the shock waves. Prior to this playthrough, I didn't know that you could roll through the shockwaves. I always thought that the earth shatter, that you had to jump to evade them. But no, you can just roll through them if you get the timing right. Okay, so before we continue with the final boss, if you're familiar with my runs, you will know that we always grab some extra items before. So I'm now gonna head back to the Limgrove Tower Bridge and there is a helm that I need for the fight with the end boss. This is where we're standing in front of the way gate. I have restarted and therefore they can't see me. Now we will be dropping down here. And at the end of the broken bridge, we can grab the Ash of War Scarab. Okay, and with that, I will make my way now to Leonia of Lakes, to the Scenic Isle side of Grace. Here on this ruin, we will cheat the Death Rite bird that will pop up at night there. Now nah, I'm gonna go up here because I'm tired of you killing me. The bird is immune to poison, so I have to rot it. Okay, now I have to wait. Sorry. It's gonna be a bit boring, this will take some time, so I'm just gonna wait. I don't have any more use of, of my rot pots, so it's fine if I use them up here. Yeah, I messed up my, my rot pots, so I have to now... I have to use my bow and arrow. Okay.
Okay, with the red feathered brand sword in our possession now and yeah, we can return back to the Elden Throne. With the new items equipped, it's time to face the endgame boss. To activate the brand sword, which boosts attack power by 20%, I'll need to lower my health to below one fifth. I will drink my wondrous physique and apply rock breeze to my godskin peeler as the boss in the first phase can be affected by rot. Then I'll use a starlight shard and lastly one bottle of blob ball aromatic. His health bar is now where I want it to be, so I won't be engaging in any more attacks until he starts hitting the ground with his hammer. Just like with the Hura Lu fight, I now have to use one Starlight Shard and one Blob Ball Aromatic on the second, exactly on the second, otherwise I will be spawned into the second phase without having consumed my items. Once again, the health bar is where I needed it to be. So I won't be engaging any further until the Elden Beast casts their Elden Ring attack. Alright everyone, here we are at the Fractured America side of Grace. We have finished the game and I'm pretty happy about it actually. Sure, there were some misses here and there, but I think overall it was a pretty good gameplay. I did enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed this challenge run as well. And with that, we're done with this one and I hope to see you guys next time for yet another challenge run. Stay tuned and I'll see you around. Bye. Cat pooped. Cat pooped and it smells bad.